Hi, I'm Ed Chung. I have Meniere's disease. I'm also an internal medicine physician. I'm creating, creating these series of videos again to hopefully help um, others out there with Meniere's disease that help cope with the symptoms and to get some more information education about this. This is video 5.5 in which I'm going to try to talk about tips that you can do now. I hope you reviewed or watched tip, uh, video 5, which is even more important, talking about lifestyle modifications. Again, to review that, there's five major things you need to do. You need to reduce your stress and stay positive. Number two, you need to start a wellness or symptom journal to write down all your symptoms and what you eat and, and how you're feeling. Um, number three, you need to get lots and lots of sleep. In fact, that actually should be number one. Number four, uh, you need to watch your diet with the low salt diet, no MSG, quit smoking, take a multivitamin. And number five, you need to overall improve your health and fitness especially your core strength and your, it's called proprioception, in which your ability to, to sense your balance and your muscles and your body. So this is video 5.5 in which I'm going to try to talk about tips that you can try now. Uh, it's a series of tips that have seemed to help me cope with the symptoms of Meniere's, um, but I can't guarantee they're going to help you, um, but it won't hurt to try. Um, I'm going to, this leads me into the sort of the story that one of the um, attending physicians that I've talked to about this Meniere's disease um, have told me. And he started out with the story saying, do you know why the Indian rain dance has shown a 100% success rate? It always works, all the time. And he says the reason Indian rain dance has always been shown to always produce rain is because when they're in a drought, someone starts dancing and doing the Indian rain dance and they continuously do the Indian rain dance every day continuously until it rains. Okay, So it's the same thing with Meniere's disease. All these little tips and hints uh, or things, if I told you to go stand on your head every day for the next year until the Meniere's gets better, you're going to think I'm a genius if standing on your head fixed this. Okay, So I, I can't say these tips are going to help, but they definitely can't hurt and I find that they've been helpful. So uh, I'm going to break the tips into three things. Number one, the mechanical or physical tips that seem to help with, with, with my ear and the Meniere's disease. Um, number one, I'm going to have to say is that you need to optimize your ex external ear canal or clean out your, your ears. I'm going to bring up this, this little, little diagram again. Again, remember there's the external ear, middle ear, and internal ear. This is what's swollen and having problems inflaming the nerve. The middle ear is your station tube, and then the outer ear is your ear canal with um, ending at the eardrum. So if, your ear, if any part of this whole complex is off or having problems, you're going to have symptoms reflected in the nerve there. So very simple thing, need to optimize your external ear, clean out your ears. A um, couple things I've, I've tried, this is the swimmer's ear for if you have fluid in the external ear or inflammation external ear. I don't recommend this. Okay, I've used this. It's caused me to go uh, completely deaf with it because there's some kind of alcohol drying agent and it seems to dry up the fluid. But then when it dries up the fluid, it causes the, the whole middle ear to shut down and I go completely deaf. But you can try it once or twice to see if it maybe help you. It doesn't help me. I w for your external ear canal, use these. It's just like a, a simple eardrop that has some um, peroxide and some... Um, earwax emollient softener and then you can flush out the ear with some fluid or water or use a q-tip even though they don't recommend that but again clean out your external ears number two I recommend squeegeeing your inner ear okay the way you squeegee it is is you take your finger okay put it up next to the external ear canal use a little tissue push on the ear and then push and squeeze and then it seems to like create negative pressure from the inner middle ear area. By creating that negative pressure, I feel that it actually draws out some of that extra fluid that sort of leaks it, leaks out. I think the external fluid leaks out. There's a little window there that, that drains. I find it extremely, extremely helpful. So I, I recommend squeegeeing out your inner ear. Um, it's the best thing that I found helpful. Number three, equalize your inner ear, your middle ear. Okay, this is your external ear middle ear, inner ear. The inner ear is attached to the middle ear and there's a little round window it's called. See that little little red circle, round circle? 
And what happens is that it's attached to your station tube. Your station tube actually drains from your middle ear all the way down to your throat. That's why when you go in the airplane, your ears get all plugged up. It's because your middle ear gets your station tube not opened, and then it, and then it gets all pressurized and hurts. Well, a um, couple things to open up the station tube. I definitely recommend is just the jaw thrust, opening up the jaw, pushing it outward, and then gargling. Just uh, use some mouthwash, just regular mouthwash. Gargle, gargle two or three times a day. It opens up the station tube. Keeps, keeps the middle ear open. Uh, another thing I definitely, definitely recommend is try opening up your sinuses. For short term, temporary, you can use a little bit of this nasal decongestant, oxybutyn. If, it, if you have a cold or sinuses, you can use the neosinephrine. There are two different types of medicines. They both open up the, um, the, the your sinuses. However, you can only use those short term. You cannot use them long term. The other thing I, I, I highly, highly, highly recommend if you have sinus problems and it seems to help and it helps with allergies, which is great, get the sinus rinse. It's over the counter. There's a little bit of salt, bicarbonated salt, sterile salt solution. You drop it into the water, some warm water, put it into your sinuses, flush out your sinuses gently, gently. Use some simple sinus rinse. That actually helps a lot with opening up your, your sinuses. Okay. Once your sinuses are clear, your inner ears, your middle ear actually should hopefully help, hopefully keep up and, and be clear too. The last, th the last thing I'm going to recommend is try. A, it's called a bone, like a little vibration tool, a bone vibrator. I tilt my head. This is my affected ear. I tilt my head toward that. I try push on this. It vibrates out the mastoid, which is that bone right behind your ear, and mass, and it vibrates out your your jaw and your inner ear. Use this two or three times a day. You can buy them over the counter. There's another one. Again, push on the inner ear, turn it downwards. This is thought to actually sort of shake out, or maybe shake out or squeeze out some of that extra fluid. And on top of that, there's some thought that there may be some extra little crystals or fluid or something that's in your balance centers. And these things, I mean, they're like 10 bucks. Go out and get one, try it two or three times a day. On the affected side, turn it like a 35, 40 degrees downwards to 90 degrees to the, to the, to the ground. Try it for a couple of minutes. I found it actually very helpful, especially with the vertigo. Okay. So that's the mechanical things I recommend. For the tintness or the, or, or the ringing, um, use a white noise generator. You can buy them anywhere. They have nature sounds. They have fuzzing. You can turn the radio on to like sort of an intermittent station with some fuzz. That, that seems to help or go outside and, and just the wind noise seems to help decrease the tendons. Second thing I recommend is try the sleep app. There's actually this, this application um, uh, by, it's called Bonsai Labs. It's called Brainwave. Uh, and um, it's like three or four dollars or maybe five dollars at most, but it has these sort of wave sounds that you listen to when you when you put some 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 um, earplugs in or um, earbuds in, and they actually have this white noise, and along with that, it has um, these intermittent sounds that create this sort of um, uh, brainwave pattern. You, you read about it; it's very very good. This app actually seems to work, and it seems to help a lot. And then the last thing I, I definitely, the third thing I recommend on for tinnitus and the hearing, because it is driving me crazy right now, it is ringing like crazy right now, is get a hearing aid, okay? The hearing aid may help you, it may not help you, but I put the hearing aid in because I'm deaf right now and it's ringing, and then you can adjust it, the volume, with this. This is a $3,500 hearing aid. You don't have to buy the expensive one. It may not help you, but you know what? Try it. If you have hearing loss, try. You do not have to buy one. You just try one out. They, legally, they cannot have you buy a hearing aid, and you have 60 days to return it. So get a hearing aid from a reputable hearing audiologist and try it for 60 days. You don't like it, return it. I mean, literally return it. You, and they legally cannot keep a penny of your, of your money. So try it out. See if that helps with your tenderness with the hearing loss, especially. Um, it, it markedly, markedly, markedly helps me, and I mean, if even actually sometimes suppresses some of that nausea and the vertigo that I get with the hearing aid. 
I don't know why, but it just does. So get a hearing aid if you have hearing loss. And even if it's very mild hearing loss, it helps with the tenderness. And it, you know, it, and it, again, it's free to try out. Okay. The last thing I'm going to recommend are, uh, um, is that you, oh, uh, is your diet or supplement tips. Okay. Uh, number one, drink lots and lots of fluid. And what I'm going to recommend that you try to aim for is aim for three to five liters of fluid a day. Okay. Um, there's some studies and, and thoughts that there's this thing called antidiuretic hormone. It's called ADH. Okay. Um, what they find is patients with Meniere's disease have double the levels of, of, of this ADH circulating in their system. And what ADH is, is actually this is hormone that it, it is in your kidneys, but it's also in the, in the inner, inner ear with the fluids. And the ADH gets pumped up, it causes you to retain fluid, retain salt, and then it's thought to cause a swelling. So it forms this big circle, but ADH causes increasing stress, um, and, and then increase inner ear fluids, and then causing symptoms. So it's thought that if you can block your ADH, um, it's possible that it can help with the symptoms of years. So what happens if you drink lots and lots of fluid, we're talking about three to five liters a day, your total circulating blood volume is about five to five and a half liters a day, so you literally replace all the fluid. You keep yourself filled up with fluid. It decreases the amount of ADH, so it won't hurt. Try it. Drink lots of fluid, number one. Number two, I absolutely no question recommend trying a B-complex vitamin, okay? See the B-complex vitamin, and the reason for the B-complex vitamins, again, very good for the nerves, very good for the, for overall, um, you know, certain nerve deficiencies, won't hurt. You're going to urinate out anything else that, 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 that you don't need. Try multivitamin 2 with it. The other things, calcium, won't hurt. Get a, try the calcium. The calcium will stabilize, possibly stabilize some of those little cells that are in the middle ear. Okay. Number three, third recommendation, try some alcohol in moderation. I'm not talking about drinking like a ton of alcohol to drain out everything you feel. Drink at most one to two drinks a day. And the reason I say this again, with this ADH um, uh, secretion, alcohol has been shown to actually decrease the ADH production, and it's also a diuretic. It dries things out. It may help. Fourth thing you can try, uh, you can try some ginkgo biloba. Won't hurt. Uh, some of the studies have been shown helpful. Try it. One, two, three tablets a day. But you got to give it some time to try it, um, one to one to three months. And the last thing, um, or oh, actually the other thing I recommend, melatonin again help you sleep, put you in the, in the sleep sen uh, cycle. That's constructive and good for sleep. And then the last thing, I, I, a couple things I, I, I will recommend. You need to increase for as far as diet goes. You need to increase your fiber in your diet and have regular bowel movements, just like that they ha recommend you having a diuretic to increase your urine and produce um, excretion of the, of the salt, your stool will actually excrete salt too and you need to have some regular diet. So buy a bag of prunes, it has tons and tons of potassium in it which will help and fiber and it's a stimulant to help you get a good bowel movement. Make sure you take that. And the last two tips I'm going to recommend are that you protect your ears. You need to protect your ears from further hearing loss. So get some earplugs. Don't wear them to block out the sound because it's just going to make your tinnitus worse. But if you're in a high, uh, loud situation, a concert, whatever, get some earplugs, put them in your ears, protect your ears. You're still going to hear with through them, but it will actually prevent you from getting further high frequency hearing loss. And the last thing I'm going to recommend, get some glasses. The glasses will actually help with the vision and your overall feeling um, when you're dealing with the flares of the min Meniere's. Those are my tips for now. Again, this is video 5.5. and video 6, I'm going to talk about the medications um, that are used for Meniere's. Thanks.